Hey, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com, but you knew that already. This is going to be an unboxing of the Thunder Tiger TS4E four-wheel drive, one-tenth scale, uh, uh, I was going to say stadium truck, I don't know why, sedan. Uh, it just came out recently, uh, but you knew that also, uh, if you looked at the video title. Well, let me just open the box then. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, I have defeated it. And inside, there's a car in there. Okay, that's a good thing. And uh, now what? Ah, box inside of a box. Half a box inside of a box. Yeah. Another box inside of the box. Okay. There's some paperwork in here and an antenna tube. This. This is a radio. Uh, it's a controller. Ace RC is the little brand name that they they created to put on these uh, on their electronic items that they have done by somebody else. And this is a pretty nice, pretty decent radio. Uh, not the first time I've uh, seen this one, but uh, you know, for for just a, a basic RTR radio, it feels pretty good. Um, it does have steering dual rate and it's got your trims they're they're analog right there very easy to get to and they also have for nitro vehicles they've got uh, endpoints for throttle channel N nothing for the steering channel though but at least you do have your steering dual rate so that's good and I went ahead and extricated the vehicle from the box inside of the box inside of the box uh, off camera because it's just not a very inspired thing to do. And that leaves me with the thing itself. This is really what I'm most interested in, probably what you're most interested in here as well. And uh, well, so far, so well, hmm, I almost spoke, spoke too soon. I was gonna say so far so good, but what's going on here? Something is not right. Uh, the front of the body is scraping on the ground and the rear is all jacked up in the air that doesn't make sense why would they do that it's okay so there's that hum well it's a it's a decent looking body not necessarily the paint scheme or the the uh print scheme, I guess, the screen printing scheme. Uh, never like the windows that Thunder Tiger does, but it does at least look like a racing style body. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that it's not just a copy of somebody else's, but it, 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 I, I'm hoping that it is something original. Kind of very modern with the, uh, the, the dome in the center. Looks like a, a little bit of a Mazda, a little bit of an Alfa Romeo. Let me take this thing off because it's really bugging me the way that it's all jacked up. And of course, I'm also interested in what's underneath there. I'll give you a nice ample wing, although this is pretty flimsy though. The material that it's made of is, is relatively thin. But there we go. With the body off, well, body posts are fully adjustable, so they just did it wrong to begin with. The, uh, right height I think the right height is a little low in the rear also and excuse me a little low in the rear no a little low in the front and a little high in the rear and too springy so and just the out of the box setup is is off for some reason on such simple basic things why would they do that see so I've got a switch that's managed to come off in transit but that's okay, that'll just stick itself back on down. We've got this capacitor here that's just kind of flopping around. It's not held on to anything. Uh, that's just wanting to get caught up in the belt and just get cut off. So that'll definitely need to be uh, secured down. Uh, I don't think that this little sticker with not much stickiness is really gonna help with that. And then for some reason they put bullets, not even bullets, these, uh, 
what do you call these? Uh, some have called them bullets, but just the basic little press-on uh, connectors, which I've never, ever, 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 ever seen done on a brushless motor. So that's weird and exceedingly cheap. Uh, that's kind of sad, actually. <laughs> And I haven't even gotten to my first impressions of this thing yet. Hmm. I see, I see nice big bronze oilite bushings in there around the diff. So that's not a good thing. Uh, the belt is quite very stiff. The belt is actually rubbing against the, the ESC wire right here. I need to make a little bit of room for that. That's no big deal. I just push it off to the side a little bit. The thing is very light. Uh, that's for certain. Uh, I hadn't realized before, I don't know why I hadn't realized, but uh, it's kind of designed to use saddle packs and this must be a very old chassis because it's it's designed to use saddle nickel cells. They must have really pulled this one up from an old, old, old thing. And it almost looks like there's a little bit of channel in here as if the main chassis plate was once used for a shaft drive vehicle. I cannot confirm that. Oh, that, no, that doesn't make sense. So they've got the big cutout here, but this center piece, or maybe that's just room for where a different style of belt was. I don't know. A little confused about the, the background on where, what, they were, what they were doing with that. Um, another thing that I accidentally just felt right there is that the tires are made with a nice soft rubber. So that's a good thing. Except, uh, 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 there's no foam insert in there. It's just wanting to go completely, look at that, to go completely concave on you. That's just cheap. Come on guys, you gotta do better than that. I see a lot of play in those pillow balls in the front suspension. Quite a bit, probably getting a uh, degree, degree and a half of play in the camber right there. Uh, a lot of really cheap shortcuts taken on this thing uh, right off the bat. Mm, see the oil light bushings right there. They do have uh, a, a ball diff here in the rear, and it looks like it's made with some metal parts. That's good. The outdrives look to be metal. Well lubricated, again, ball diff up in the front. Uh, I was expecting to see a spot where you can throw a wrench in there and adjust it from the outside, but it looks like you will need to take off one of these outdrives to get in there. You can adjust at least your camber and you can adjust your front toe. And you've got a few different mounting points for uh, camber lengths at the rear. You can go up or down, get a little bit shorter. Uh, it's by default, it's at, the, it's at the longest length. You've got a few different points to mount your shocks down here on the, the A-arms. You got a few points again up front. These do have droop screws. That's a good thing. And these, these droop screws are fully bottomed out. So this thing is, uh, I think it should be able to get a little bit more droop than that. The rear, the rear is drooped just fine, but definitely immediately needs some tuning changes right out of the box. It's kind of odd. Uh, what else do we have going on here? Servo saver is operational. And it looks like it is adjustable. A little spring right there. The servo itself felt like it's uh, geared geared down quite a bit. So it, it's, well, not, not too much, but... For, for, for what it is, I think that it, it feels like a, a good amount of gearing. It's probably going to be a very slow servo, but uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, this this uh, pinion gear right here looks very familiar in its shape and construction. Uh, it looks exactly like the ones that Traxxas used to use on their, uh, their electric vehicles or off-road electric vehicles. Uh, very, very distinctive shape with the teeth rounded towards the outside. It's kind of funny, but uh, it looks like the mesh is way too tight, way too tight. There's no gap in there whatsoever. That's really what's holding this back. That's why it's being difficult 
uh, to turn right now. It's because of that mesh. So that needs to be altered for certain. Uh, this is set up to use some sway bars, it looks like. They've got some sway bar mounts back here, although uh, I, I guess they would go through and then mount to here. That's good. And it looks like the fronts, fronts are going to be the same. Uh, the steering linkages, I was a little bit worried about the, the kind of weak looking steering linkages, but there's very little play in there. That's some of the least play for steering that I felt on any RTR for a long, long time, if not ever. Uh, that's, that's good. Uh, front to back, you can, oh, you can adjust your caster angle up front because they do have these little spacers on the, on the upper arms. Um, what else have we got going on here? A lot of wax on the, the rear belts, nice and fresh. Um, Tamiya plug, Molex connector for for a, uh, a brushless vehicle. Uh, again, going a little bit cheap. Uh, definitely just needs some some alterations out of the box. Uh, now that I've got it down on the ground I, I, and I'm looking at it a little bit lower, I can see that the the front right height is actually not too bad but the rear is a little high and even when you put in some weight to simulate the weight of a battery yeah it's still still much too high so it needs needs to have some preloads removed from there so i guess as part of my review i'm gonna have to give uh, an initial just basic setup without even driving it just to get it to roughly within the range of where it where it ought to be uh, and the rear body posts also definitely need to be dropped down quite a bit. Fortunately, that's super easy. Just use a couple of uh, a couple of set screws going from the sides, and you just slide these up and down infinitely uh, to any location. Uh, there is a bearing right here. I'm assuming there are bearings throughout here. So it's a it's a combination of bearings and bushings used throughout the model. I haven't taken off the wheels yet to see what they've got in the hubs, but overall. Mm. Uh, first impressions uh, mixed to negative. Um, a lot, a lot of corners cut, and definitely the the out of the box setup is is pretty pathetic. Uh, very minimal effort went into that. I don't know why uh, any company would would go through the trouble of making a vehicle that has adjustability go through the trouble of coming up with a setup uh, for initial assembly and uh, give it a setup that just doesn't work at all. It just, I mean, look at that, it's scraping. Actually, let me, you know what? I'm going to take you off of the tripod here and give you a better view down here. Look at that. Yeah, see, that's what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. It's just sad. RTRs can be done so much better for no extra cost, no extra cost. But I will go ahead and, and fix that setup and make it right. And uh, of course, gives this thing a proper review. Uh, try to give it a shot, uh, see if I can make minimal changes. Uh, it's, I, I'm certain that it's going to need new tires uh, just because it doesn't have the foams in them. I mean, the tires are fine on this one. I, I'm not going to complain about the tires, especially for RTR. They're, they're moderately soft. They've got a little bit of tread on them, which is something that you, that you want and need for, uh, for, for general bashing use. This isn't intended to be a high end race racing car, but you know, if we're going around normal asphalt and stuff, you want to have a little bit of tread. So that's all good. Just, they just need inserts. So I'll end up having to replace the whole things because it's, it's just not it's not worth de bonding sedan wheels and tires just to put inserts inside of them anyway that's that for that mm, slightly frustrating and confusing unboxing first look at the uh, thunder tiger ts 4 e uh, low end low cost ready to run brushless four-wheel drive electric sedan if you've gotten to this point, congratulations to you. You're a little bit of a weirdo. I don't know why you're still here, but uh, thanks anyhow, and I'll be talking to you again soon.